So we've done all the hot melty soldering work of putting our heater meter base and LCD boards together. Now we need to get some software on it and interface it with our Raspberry Pi. Or are we Raspberry Pi? To get started on the software side, we're going to need to download the latest heater meter firmware. And to do that, we'll go to heatermeter.com DL for download. And once there, you'll need to select which target board you have um, for which Pi you're going to be using. There are two variants, uh, one for the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, and the other variant is for pretty much all the other um, Raspberry Pis there. Uh, next, we're going to configure our Wi-Fi. We'll pre-configure it in the firmware image so that uh, it'll know to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Uh, and that way, we don't have to mess around with uh, configuring it once it's up and using access point mode or anything. Uh, so here you just type the name of your um, wireless network um, and then enter the password for uh, your wireless network there and hit download uh, and save it to your hard drive. Um, it's 80 megs but it's, uh, it's zipped on the wire so you're only actually downloading about six or seven megs. All right, we've uh, downloaded our firmware image. Now we just need to get it onto a SD card of some sort. Um, so obviously you'll need a computer that has a SD card slot or some sort of adapter. We're going to use Win32 Disk Imager, a free download available from SourceForge, open source sort of deal. Um, we're just going to browse to our image file, which is, there it is. Notice that it has the name of our um, Wi-Fi network name built into it, so we know that it's pre-configured for our Wi-Fi. Um, and then make sure you're on the right device. That is your SD card. And right. And this is a kind of slow class 4 micro SD card, so it takes a little while. All right, and that's it. And you can just pop it out now, and we should be able to go ahead and um, move it over into our heater meter. Let's go do that. Well, our heater meter parts are assembled now. We've got these two beautiful boards put together. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, how do we get them attached to the Pi? Um, so to start with, um, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi B+, as you can tell by this device here. Um, uh, it has a 40 pin header on here. Uh, you note that the heater meter only has a 26 pin uh, header on the back here. And that's that's because it uh, only needs to mate with these first 20, actually only the first 24 pins need to mate. Um, but if you think about it going together uh, the standard way here, let's pull this in a little bit. Um, this is this over here where it says the 3.3 volts and 5 volt side, that is, that is the pin one side, uh, and that corresponds to the side over here, uh, closest to the screw holes. And this is the this is true of the the B plus, um, the the Pi two and the Pi three, or all have the same orientation, where the, the pins over here are, are pin uh, one. But uh, okay, so what you want to do is is match up um, this side to this side, and you'll see that that's the, pretty much the only way they'll fit together. If you if you try to put them together this way, you're good to go. Uh, but if you try to fit it together this way, I mean, there's just no way to get that on that piece there. So um, it's easy. You just kind of flip them over like this, line them up, and squish it down. And look from the side. I want to kind of see if you can get an eyeball in there. And make sure that you're, you're, you didn't line them up improperly, that you don't see any pins sticking out on this side. And there should be no pins sticking out on this side either, um, because if you're off by one, you could really cause some serious damage here. Got our two pieces together. Uh, we'll take our micro SD card, which we flashed with the uh, downloaded software pre-configured for Wi-Fi, uh, so we'll be able to connect. Just pop that in there, and then we'll stack on on top our LCD board. And again, it's pretty easy. You just line the pins up, and it all fits together over each other like that. Um, and not the other way, which would be to have the LCD flip the other direction. So it all kind of forms one big cohesive unit. Um, now I've just built this unit, so uh, this is, we'll see if this powers up. All right, we're going to bring in the old stopwatch here and uh, see how long it takes to power up. We've got our 12 volts coming in and go. I usually check and look around under here to see uh, the lights are lighting up. Now during this time, 
as we get to the uh, the end of this, we're going to take our uh, little contrast potentiometer here and, and turn it. Turn it until you see all black marks there, and then kind of back it off until you see that. And we should see some magic happening real soon now. Takes about a minute. Bing, you can see all the lights light up, and bam, no pit probe. So just under a minute uh, to boot up and connect to the network and be ready to go. Um, now that it's all it's up and running, we can we know that it's up and running. What we'll uh, what I'll do is. I'll uh, we'll run through some basic tests here. Um, to start with, you should see the green light and the red light will be on. This is, uh, if you have a thermocouple board, uh, which this is, um, it'll it'll automatically have this this incorrect temperature up here. That's uh, because it's, it comes pre-configured for, um, for thermistor uh, style boards. And uh, it, it thinks that's a thermistor, so that would be six degrees Fahrenheit, which is not. Um, so the first thing I do when I, I, to, to put this together is just to uh, get your, your plug that has your um, damper and fan on it um, already set up. This is just one I use for testing. Just kind of plug that in here over here and should fire up. Um, now to test all the, the functions uh, I go right into manual. I just set it to manual mode. Um, should uh, We're at zero percent now so the damper should close. The fan should be off. Uh, I then, oh, then run it on up all the way up to 100 percent. You see the green light should come on when it's it's at anything higher than zero percent, and then when it's a hundred percent, the red light comes on, indicating it's at full power. So this all seems to work. And, and doing this as well, you're testing the, the your buttons. Um, I've now trusted the up, down, left, and and right buttons, so we know that these all work. Switch it back out of manual mode and it goes back on here. Um, and then I'll test the yellow light uh, by putting it into pit into lid detect mode, which should turn off the red and green lights indicating that there's no output, and then there's um, this yellow light that indicates that it's in lid detect mode, all customizable in the, the heater meter web UI. So turn that back on. All right, now I pulled out my phone just to, and connected up to it, and we're going to change the uh, configuration over from to change the pit probe, the thermocouple that it's supposed to be. Hit save, and bam, no pit probe. So that's a, that's a good sign. Um, also want to test uh, the individual probes themselves to make sure that they're all connected and run, up and running. Uh, so I'll plug it into there. You should see about 80 degrees. Yeah, 79. Go to the next one. 79. And they should all be the same and pop in within when about one or two seconds. And 80. All right. So those all the probes work. Uh, now we'll check the the pit um, using a thermal couple. We'll just take that and plug it in. Uh, the positive side is close to the thing, and the negative side is is further back. If you have it in the case, you have it a case, uh, you'll know this. It'll be a little bit more obvious. But the uh, markings are on the the PCB here as well that point out which is the plus and the minus. At room temperature, it doesn't make that much difference though because room temperature is room temperature. And there it is, 80, 79 degrees, just like we saw on the other thing. Okay, pop that back out. Uh, if you don't have a thermocouple handy uh, and you want to test it before, you, let's say you've ordered one and you, you haven't uh, received it yet, uh, what I use is just a, you know, a jumper wire like this. Uh, you could use a paper clip, doesn't matter. Anything that conducts electricity, a little bit of wire, and just shove it in the, in the ports. This is perfectly fine. Um, it's not like it's shorting anything out here. When you connect it, it'll, it'll read the ambient temperature. Uh, that's the thermocouple lamp doing its job of, of detecting the ambient temperature for cold junction compensation. And it'll always read the ambient temperature uh, if you if you just plug in a wire into here and short it out. And that's it. There you go. You've got your fully functional tested heater meter. Uh, Pi Zero, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated because it's hard to tell <laughs> which direction this thing's supposed to go, right? Uh, it's the uh, it's pretty much the same as the as with the Pi, the plus and the Bs. Um, the side that has the SD card on it is the side that has is pin zero, so it's the same same thing here. Uh, pin one is is on this side uh, with the SD card. Um, to to make this header, uh, I I just take a piece of uh, that forty pin uh, male header and break it off and just solder it in. You only need uh, 26 pins. Uh, there's space for 40 total pins here. Uh, we only we only use the first 24, so, uh, but the, the pin header that connects to the 
a heater meter is 26 pins. So um, as you can see here, I mean, this will fit either direction. It's kind of a kind of a problem. Uh, you go this way, or it can kind of fit this way. I mean, there's you got all sorts of options as to how it goes. So you got to go by that pin one. The SD card side, um, go, the SD card side goes with uh, the probe side. And you just do the same thing. You just made it up um, like this. So slide it in. And again, you're going to want to check if I can get the light in there. Um, make sure that there's no um, pins sticking out on this side and no pins sticking out on this side. And you're good to go. And it's the same thing where the LCD stacks up over the uh, over the board. Uh, it takes the same amount of time for, with the, the Pi Zero. This is a Pi Zero W um, with the Wi-Fi built in, so it's nice and compact. Uh, it takes about a minute uh, from the first from the first boot up um, for this to um, to flash. And finally, for connecting with the Pi Three, uh, you've got the same same situation as this um, Pus, in that they uh, they both have the exact same layout. You don't have to worry about them being any different. Uh, but the uh, same thing is, is you know, pin one over here and since pin one over here and it's on the SD card side uh, so we just made it up take the same take this thing and again with the, these larger models it's nice because it's really only way one way it fits together and you'll see that the uh, USB jack slides right into the in between the circuit board here um, so that's the that's a pi 3 um, the pi 3 boots up uh, a lot faster probably about 30 seconds um, uh, before it flashes the heater meter, uh, they're about 35 seconds. Uh, it's a little bit quicker uh, than those the slower CPUs on the other devices.